your spots keep getting bigger and bigger. Gross. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Gross. I'm just gonna be straight up with you guys. This movie sucks, and for so many different reasons. The biggest one to me though, and one that I'm sure many of you already can see, is that it's a ripoff of Finding Dory. Well, technically Finding Nemo, but the studio that made this movie released it around the same time as Finding Dory, so they could ride its coattails and make money off of unsuspecting people. Ah, uh, poor grandma. Oh, my little grandchild keeps talking about that fish movie. They're going to love this. Okay, so let's talk about the origin of this movie. I mean, to be honest, there's not much to it. This movie was made by the Asylum, the same shitheads who made Sharknado and Trollland. They're known for being lazy, low budget, and very uninspired. Just a bunch of dumb movies that steal from the attention and success of other movies. This was the case for Izzy's Way Home. The film wasn't made to tell a story or showcase new animation. It was to siphon viewership from Pixar, and there's no integrity about that. Okay, so let's Let's go over my five points. Story. Like I said, it's a ripoff, and there's nothing redeeming to it. I have little patience for movies that do shit like this and steal from actual artists and storytellers. Voice acting. It's a weird mixture of not too bad to very bad. Talk to the thin. Of course, they have their ensemble of washed up actors who are just trying to make a buck. Also, Joey from NSYNC is in this movie. Yeah, I guess the guy's having some hard times. It worked out great though. I hit him with my intestines. Splat, straight out of my butt. Dialogue. Just like the voice acting, it ranges from not so bad to just being terrible. Also, there are moments where the characters motion or talk about something, but the animators don't animate or even draw what's supposed to be there. It's very confusing, and I'm sitting there wondering what the hell they're talking about. Editing. Honestly, the editing is par for the course in a bad movie like this. I mean, at least the audio levels are balanced. But let's talk about the real juicy stuff. The animation. God, is it lazy. Not troll and lazy, thank the lord, but still quite lazy. We got lazy lip syncs, where the mouths just move slowly and don't sync up with the voice acting. We have eyes and faces that spaz out. We have lighting effects that aren't functioning properly and looks all screwed up. But the thing I hate the most is the point of view of the characters. There are action moments where we follow the characters and the camera just goes crazy. I don't know what's happening and the perspective goes all over the place and it sucks. Okay, so it starts off with a boat and lagoon with a bunch of parent fish waiting for their babies to be born. It's time. What do you think? It's time, right? I think so too! That's Harold, and is obviously our Marlin ripoff. Okay, so this confused me. Who's the father of the other female fish? Is it Harold? Or uh, this guy? Maybe there's some kind of harem going on. Do I smell a possible anime? I knew that one wouldn't hatch. I can always tell. It's a bad egg. Only the best voice acting for this movie. Okay, so Nemo, <laughs> Izzy, is born and has a birth defect. Apparently this is bad because the human who looks over them will toss anybody who's not perfect overboard. Isabel is different. Okay, so the British fish tells Harold that he needs to hide his daughter or she will get tossed. What, what's with this guy's accent? Harold, oh boy. Your daughter, she's uh, mentally uh, challenged. and uh, She must be hidden from the human, old boy. <laughs> That's how he sounds like. It's ridiculous. 
I won't let anything happen to my darling girl. So Harold tries to hide Izzy, even though she wants to play and be out and about. But the other fish aren't too happy about that. And oh my God, he's, he's not even walking. He just hovered to the tank. God, that is terrifying. Okay, so this part in particular is actually kind of funny. Your mother used to say, it doesn't matter how you look, it matters what you do. She was wrong. It matters to him. Your mother said that beauty is on the inside and you don't have to fear the world. Well, she was wrong. Okay, so like I was saying, the other fish in the tank are mean to Izzy and act like a bunch of popular girls from high school. Also, their voice acting is just terrible. Saving that for later. <laughs> So gross. I bet I could find lots of friends in the ocean. It would be so cool. I think it'd be kind of hot. What? The British fish, who does not like Izzy whatsoever, decides to push her out into the middle of the tank, where the humans saw her, took her and her father, and tossed them overboard. And then this volcano erupts and creates a tidal wave that crashes into the boat and knocks the other fish overboard. During all of the craziness, Izzy gets lost and also gets really beaten up. She gets cut, she gets burned, she gets smashed by a rock. It's really funny. During the confusion, some fish saves her life and takes her away. But oh no, they run into a lionfish. That sounds like a lion. Hello! <laughs> we then cut back to Harold, who decides to go looking for his daughter. He then meets a sea cucumber, who wants to help him out, but not before preaching about saving the environment. The sardine migration, coral bleaching. Hey, hey, humans have to stop that, by the way. I mean, I am all for saving the environment too, but this is so on the nose. We then cut back to Izzy, who then meets all of the riff-raff friends of the rockfish. I love this one fish in particular. He sounds so fabulous, but it's kind of weird because he talks about finding a treasure, motions to said treasure, but there's nothing there. It's my latest treasure, part of the Herman collection, named after yours truly. <laughs> Isn't it simply amazing? We find out that the fish friends have to travel across a volcano in order to get to the reef. And Izzy leads the way, but not before having some really awkward fun. I, I, I mean, really, it's, it's kind of awkward. I, I don't know what they're doing. They just take turns spinning around, and <laughs> I'm not sure why. I had to do it! The space is marvelous! We then cut back to Harold and the sea cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he's one of those kind of characters. But oh no, they're attacked by some mean crabs. And to the movie's credit, the sea cucumber defends himself the way that actual sea cucumbers do. He shits out his intestines. They thought they got away, but are suddenly caught by some tentacles. We go back to Izzy and her friends, but holy shit, the lionfish is back. After an amazing chase scene, Izzy breaks down about how ugly she is. All of you are, are so cool looking like rocks and sponges. My scales were my one pretty thing about me, and now they're gone. But the other fish tell her that she's pretty and unique. Come with us. That's what I keep saying. Come now, before the lava and raining ash start oozing all over us. What the hell are you talking about? We go back to Harold and the cucumber, and how they were saved by an octopus. Hey, uh, what's happening here? Isabel's trail can't find Isabel's trail. Something that doesn't make a lick of sense is how Harold is tracking Izzy by her trail that's on the ground from a fish that swims. We go back to Izzy and her friends and find ourselves with one of the dumbest scenes in the movie. The group is tired and Izzy, for some reason, decides to go up to a fish hook that has no bait, mind you, and somehow gets stuck to it. What? How'd this happen? Did it pierce her on the side? And if so, how'd she get off the hook? This scene makes no sense. I fucking hate it. I hate this movie. So Izzy and her friends are heading towards the volcano and meet some decrepit eels. You lost your father? Ralph, we need to help. What? 
After that, they get swept up by a school of fish, and then this happens. Seymour, Joe, Ginger! Uh-oh! I absolutely love how they reveal the dolphin. It's like straight out of a horror film. We didn't even add that sound to the edit. It's actually like this. Come on! I wouldn't do that if... <laughs> I told you. Sometimes you can be such a fish head. Is, is that a substitute for shithead? God, I hope so. Honest to God, I don't understand what they're trying to do here. Let's get stuck in a rock. That won't do anything to help us get away from the dolphin. But holy shit, this fish is strong. The rock fish is able to move the rock. But what's even more impressive is that the dolphin shattered the rock. But thank God, that octopus comes by and rescues Izzy and tells her where her father is. But oh, poor Harold. He arrives at the volcano and finds the corpse of a fish thinking that it's his daughter. So the fish friends arrive at the volcano and are trying to cross it, which begs the question, why are they doing this to begin with? You're in the ocean, just go around. So Izzy has the brilliant idea to fly across the volcano, which <laughs> totally works. Harold then gets angry at the sea cucumber for wasting his time even though he was helping him. Harold gets pissy and leaves with the other fish. But then Izzy finds the sea cucumber and is greeted with a nasty ass burp. Again, I hate gross characters like this. More often than not, there's nothing charming about them. The aquarium fish arrive at the reef, and the British fish goes full on racist on the ugly fish. Just look at all of you. This is wow. <laughs> Izzy shows up though, and is finally reunited with her father. The British fish then tells Harold and Izzy to leave the reef, cause uh, he can? <laughs> okay. But Izzy says no. But it doesn't matter, a giant sea snake arrives, and everybody works together to fight the snake. Also, the camera work in this scene is just terrible. It is so hard to watch. Oh, you're in for it now, buddy! Oh, another fart joke, yeah! And oh my gosh, talk about a movie twist. Izzy's mom comes out of nowhere and kills the snake. Their family is finally back together, and that's the end of the movie. Also, nothing ever happens to the British fish. He's obviously a villain. He does not help to fight the snake. And they never address that. I guess he just gets away with his crimes and stays on the reef. I, I realized that I was a bit of a, a, a bad guy by pushing your daughter into the middle of the water tank and getting her thrown overboard, and that I was a raging racist when I was talking about the other fish and how they are lesser than us because they're not a white fish like me. But Harold, oh boy, we must put the past behind us and let me stay here on the reef without any kind of repercussions whatsoever. Yeah, end movie. Uh, movie's over. <laughs> <laughs> and if, uh, oh, this movie sucks. Overall, this is a bad movie. It loses extra points since it's a shameless ripoff that was only trying to cash in on Finding Dory. It's funny though, cause some of the reviews I found online were like, it was a copy of the Pixar movie, but it wasn't too bad. Th that's like a teacher saying to a student, well, you plagiarize your essay, but it wasn't too terrible. I guess you get a C plus, but that shouldn't matter. If you rip somebody off, you're a piece of shit and there's nothing redeeming about what you made. And even if Izzy's Way Home was original, I'm sure it still would have been garbage. Lazy animation, subpar voice acting, and weird story plots that never pay off. This movie sucks. Don't watch it. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a like and sub for more future videos. Also, a shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. If you want to support my content, go hit up the link in the description. All right, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.